Hello everyone and welcome to my kitchen. Normally when we do these uh, podcasts we are upstairs in the attic studio where it's very quiet but today we are downstairs and most of these mini casts will be done um, somewhere in the house wherever it's relevant for that mini cast to be but that means we're also down in a very active household. I think I have eight people here today plus three dogs so if there's any random cuts that probably means someone came to the door and our dog doorbells went off to let us know. But today we are going to talk about filing systems as we discussed in the uh, basic household administration podcast. So come on over here to my desk and we'll go through some of the basics. Okay. Even in today's virtual world, you are going to need to keep keep some paper files, whether they are rental agreements, um, credit card company agreements, uh, medical forms, what, you need some hard paper files. So mm -hmm. you need a way to organize those hard paper files, not only so that they're not just sitting around everywhere, but you can find them when you need them. So one of the rules that people talk about is mail. That's usually how most of the paperwork comes into our houses is through the mailbox or we've gone to the doctor's office, say, and come back with our doctor's form. Okay. If you tried to file them all at the same time or if you tried to deal with the electric bill as soon as it came in, well, then you'd constantly be pulling out your pen or signing on to the web or what you'd constantly be gearing up to do the task and you'd waste a lot of time and set up and stop and changing your school of thought. So I recommend doing your filing weekly um, and then on specific finances, doing that twice a month as we discussed in the previous one, I do the 5th and the 25th. Okay. So in that case, if you're not gonna do your mail, as soon as it hits the door, you need a place for it to live. First of all, when I bring mine in, come in here, this is my desk. My trash can is right there. I have my letter opener, open things up. Anything that needs to be trashed goes immediately to the trash. So touch that once. The rest of it goes into my inbox until my filing day, um, which is usually Thursdays for me now. Now, once, um, once Thursday comes along, then I have a mini or a pre-file and it's here in my drawer right next to me. All right, and my main one is I have, this is my active file, stuff that I need to do, um, bills that need to be paid, um, and then I have recently hired a personal assistant, so this is her file of stuff that I delegate. Then there also is the stuff that I need on a regular basis, so things like the church um, directory, uh, Charities, um, there might be various contact lists that I need or some specific or an invitation that I need to go ahead and RSVP one way or another. Um, and then I want to keep the invitation so that I make sure that I have the address. These days I tend to take a picture of it and attach it to my calendar entry. Um, but sometimes you still want to keep the invitation just in case. Um, schools is a big one. So things like bell schedules and certain children's codes and stuff. So the stuff that you need to access on a regular basis, go ahead and keep right next to your desk. Um, for the rest of the stuff, I have a filing folder in the back, which is oh, not empty. If you recall from one of the previous episodes, I'd recently had my carpets cleaned and then the dog went in urinated on the floor. Yes, that would be that. Um, but I tend to put the filing away once a month. Actually, now I have one of the children dedicate, um, it's one of their chores. And I'm now on my third child teaching them how to do filing um, by giving them the chore for a year. Anyway, we will go over to my filing system in just a second. And we'll talk about your specific files that you need. All right, now we are in a closet not far from my office kitchen desk. Um, and this is where I keep most of our files except for our personal files. And I'm gonna go through that real quick. Um, for each member of the household, you need to have um, a personal file, a medical file, if they are still in school, an education file, um, and if they are employed, an employment file. So personal would be things like birth certificates, um, social security cards, voter registrations, um, or maybe you had a feature in the local newspaper about something that that person didn't, that would all go in the personal file. Medical files are a bit self-explanatory, medical records, of any sort. Um, education files, you're applying your children for school, um, 
you have report cards, um, important letters from the teacher, maybe some of the important the really great report that one of your kids did and you want to make sure to save, that would all go in the education file. Um, for the employed people in the households, you want to keep the files relative to their employment. Um, so maybe pay stubs, um, expense reports. If there's a lot of those, you might want to eventually make an, an individual file for that. But um, employment agreements, uh, whatever is related to that person's employment. And so then you just have those. So there's a separate, in another part of the house, there's a separate drawer with a three files for each member of our household. Now we get to the major regular files. All right, so this is our normal file drawer. Um, the yellow files are taxes, and I will discuss those at the end. So I'm going to move them up. Everything else that you need to keep filed is done generally in alphabetic order. So here we have autos. Once upon a time, I used to break out different automobiles that we had, but frankly, you need to keep the title. You needed to keep um, any sort of maintenance documents and stuff. Um, most households only have two cars. It's just put it all in the auto file. You usually don't have to access it, so you don't have to flip through a lot even when you need to find the information. Next, banking. Um, so I have separate accounts for each of our each of our banks that we have used. Um, and then we have UK ones as well. Then credit cards. These days, and I'm sorry, but for privacy reasons, I've taken my credit files out of here just in case. Um, these days, you don't really need to keep much information in your credit file, save the credit agreement, because um, most of you are on paperless delivery for your bills, probably. But any correspondence, if you have a, a fraud claim with somebody stealing your identity, whatever, put that in your credit card file. Depending on how many credit cards you have, how complicated it is, you may want to break it out so that you have a subfile for, say, MasterCard, Visa, et cetera. But you don't need to, that's kind of depends on your own personal circumstances. Um, okay. Okay. Then the insurance files. So insurance, um, auto is first. So keep your auto policy there. Um, life insurance, medical insurance. So basically your agreements, any claim forms, um, any paperwork that they send to you that you want to keep on hand, certainly the agreements, um, insurance property, um, Okay, then we have memberships. So you are a member of a health club or you um, have joined um, ROCA, which is a chamber orchestra here in town. So membership agreements here, dues agreements, etc. cetera. Um, ah, pension, so retirement information. I file it under pension, so it comes up on P. Um, then pets. Uh, same thing as automobiles. Once upon a time, I broke out the files by individual pets. Um, I don't do that anymore. Now I just keep all of their current veterinary um, records, etc. cetera, um, all just kind of in here. I don't have to refer to this a whole lot, so it doesn't really matter if I have to flip through and figure out where's Reagan's or where's Rose or where's Ruby's. And the R's just kind of happen. We didn't plan that part. Um, ah, parties and catering. Um, my husband and I happen to do a lot of entertaining. So this is where I keep various files about um, how many chairs we ordered last year for New Year's Eve, um, who we ordered them from, how much they cost, um, et cetera. Below, because the file got so big, I actually pulled it out of, and I'm only gonna open it just a second. Um, I pulled it out of the regular alphabetical system and this is all the residence information. So mortgage paperwork, um, receipts that I keep for valuables that we have in the house um, for later proving um, if I have an insurance claim or something like that on them. So all of our residence paperwork is in another file. And that kind of depends on your own. If you're in an apartment, you need to keep your rental agreement there. Um, if you have multiple ha title agreements, um, mortgage, mortgage agreements, anything related to your residence, um, you can break out as you need according to your own details. Um, then every once in a while, there's some other incidentals depending on your own life and what you've got going on. And you might want to have, if you have a lot of paperwork coming in for something particularly that you do, um, go ahead and have a, make a file for that. But those are the basic ones that you need to keep your paperwork sanity down and to be able to find the information when you need it. My dog's about to bark. Bye.